Hi, I'm Jennifer Chipsmith, and today I'm going to talk to you about NOLA Pender's Health Promotion Theory. Through this presentation, I will explain the basic principles of health promotion model and will try to apply it within the context of patients who present to the emergency department with opioid use disorder. To start us off, I am going to address the question, why is this important? In 2017, the opioid epidemic was declared a public health emergency. Opioid-related deaths are growing exponentially every year and rose 25% in Ontario in the first few months of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is estimated that for every fatal overdose, 30 more non-fatal overdoses take place. Emergency nurses are frontline workers to the opioid crisis not only treating overdoses, but also treating patients with abscesses, cardiac complications, and a multitude of other complications that arise from opioid use. So what exactly is the health promotion model? Why was it created? What is Pender's view of health? Health promotion model is considered a grand theory of nursing. It was first developed by Pender in 1982, then revised in 1996. Pender recognized that nurses spend more time providing treatment to patients than engaging in health promotion and illness prevention activities. The health promotion model was developed to help nurses understand determinants of health and to help nurses positively impact their patients towards health promoting behaviors. The ultimate goal is to focus on increasing a patient's well being by helping them achieve their ideal health. Pender holds a unitary, holistic concept of health similar to theorists like Roger, Newman, Parse, and Watson. Health is viewed as a primary life experience. While it may be superimposed by disease, illness cannot exist without health as its foundation. Health is a subjective lived experience, and one's personal view of health changes over their lifetime. In other words, how someone views health as a child is much different than how they view it as an older adult. The health promotion model has three areas of focus. First is individual experiences and characteristics. Second, behavior specific knowledge and effect. And the third is results of behavior. Individual experiences and characteristics gives consideration to how past behavior as well as personal factors impact one's ability to engage in health promoting behavior. Behavior specific knowledge and effect explains how one's feelings regarding health promoting behavior impacts their perceived self efficacy, that is, how confident they are in their ability to succeed. It also considers their views of cost and benefits of participating in health promoting behaviors. This area also addresses interpersonal influences, whether they are positive or negative, as well as situational influences. All of these areas have the ability to impact one's commitment to participating in health promoting behavior. Lastly, Pender addresses results of behavior. All areas previously considered, as well as demands and self-control, all lead to a positive or negative impact on health promoting behavior. When integrating theory into practice, Pender recommends that nurses engage with their patients to decipher the patient's readiness to participate in health promoting behavior. This scale ranges from pre-contemplative to maintenance. While substance abstinence is the ultimate objective when helping patients with opioid use disorder, it is important to remember that there are many steps between pre-contemplation and maintenance stages of readiness. No matter what stage a person's readiness is, nurses can still work toward health promoting behavior. This might be in the form of risk reduction strategies, opioid agonist therapy, or referring patients to other healthcare providers. It is also important to remember that as unitary beings, patients are more likely to achieve success in maintaining health-promoting behaviors when they are treated from a holistic perspective.